Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. The meeting will be starting shortly. While we wait, let's learn more about Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.
of the Exeter River Advisory Committee for January 20th, 2022. And uh, I guess what we need to do is start with a roll call so that the recording secretary can know who's here. So I am Richard Huber and I'm here. Ron Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay. Lionel is here. Carl Wickstrom. Carl Wickstrom is here. Rod Borden. Rod Borden is here. Trevor Madera. Trevor Madera is here. Terry Harmon. Terry Harmon is here. And? And Dan Jones has just yeah. arrived. Sorry, too far that down the woods. Very oh, close to 100%. And Paul Vlasich is hiding over in the corner. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's who's here. And uh, first order of the day is to convene the meeting and then do the minutes of November 18th, which I have a draft copy here. Everybody has poured over this, looking for anything that needs correction. Did anybody find anything that needs correction? Pretty good secretary. Okay. Looked like right. a good job. So um, I guess we need the motion to, to approve the minutes. And a second. I'll second it. So Lionel, Lionel moved and... And I'll second it. Okay. Yep. Rod seconded it, and that's... Uh, Let's, let's vote. How many are in favor of accepting the minutes as they are? Aye. aye. All in favor say aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? I'm it's abstaining. Go. Oh, uh, Trevor is going to abstain. For that meeting. I also am abstaining. I don't think I was here for that meeting. I'm not. Okay. Sure. I wasn't here for the last meeting. Is that the last meeting? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was, the last, it was November, but right. it was the last meeting, yeah. Okay. So Carl is abstaining as well. All right, so much for the minutes. Now the next thing is to ask Paul what's going on with our project. <laughs> Hello, Paul Velocity, uh, town engineer. Um, I did watch the November meeting that I wasn't able to attend. I wasn't feeling well. Uh, and you did do a, a fine job of relaying the uh, uh, messages on the two grants that uh, I want to talk about here again today. Uh, the first one is the Clean Water uh, State Revolving Fund. It was a stormwater uh, planning uh, grant. At first it was if you were uh, applying for the SRF, there was a potential $75,000 principal forgiveness. And that was uh, converted over to a grant. So you didn't have to take out the loan uh, to be able to get the $75,000 uh, forgiveness. It changed to a $100,000 uh, grant. So uh, we've got that. We've got some uh, homework to do on it. Uh, and, and this will be administered by Deb Lazelle. And Deb Lazelle was uh, one of the members of the River Study Committee back when the uh, uh, Great Dam Project was going on. So she's familiar with Exeter. And she's familiar with uh, uh, this group here also. Um, the first thing we're gonna have to do is uh, uh, make a statement of why we don't need to go out to another qualification-based selection process for the consultant. Uh, we did that with the original uh, Great Dam project, and from there, uh, because of the expertise in the river and the floodplain, and then we used them, uh, our, our consultants, for the uh, breach analysis. It just kept uh, playing along. So, so we've got to make a statement or a explanation of why uh, we are uh, still going to stay with our current uh, consultant. Uh, we'll also uh, need to draft up a draft uh, uh, scope of work and uh, get that to Deb uh, for her concurrence uh, prior to uh, drawing up a, uh, the standard engineering contract also. One of the things we'll have to do is be, for the 100,000, we'll have to say what specific tax tasks will be paid for uh, with the $100,000 uh, grant. 
And so that will happen over the uh, next uh, couple of months. And then it would still have to go to their uh, governor and council for award also. Any questions? Yeah, let me let me ask a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> what we need is a feasibility study of the pickpocket environment that would determine what options we have to remove the hazard status of the situation. And that would require an engineering firm to figure out what are the options, what are the pros, what are the cons of each option, what does each option cost. And my guess is that we would be contracting with VHB to do this work. Is that close to correct? That's our intentions at this point, correct. Okay. Um, do we have an idea of how much it would cost to, to have VHB do this work? Uh, we are working on that. Also, we got some preliminary estimates, and of course the uh, consultant's estimates are, are a little bit higher than our pocketbook could allow. Yeah. Uh, so, so we are uh, going to need to refine the, uh, the tasks. Uh, I have a, a ballpark, but as we continue on with some of the rest of this discussion, yeah. uh, it, it'll lay out what we need for, for money. Okay, and then uh, how long would that study take, generally speaking, once we turn them loose to do it? Uh, probably all finished a uh, year and a half. year and a half. And uh, when would, I mean, we would, the, the when is, I mean, we now have new commitments to deadline dates that have been moved two years, but that would, that's when this would have to occur in that time frame, right? Okay, um, so we're looking at funding that's available and the funding that's needed, and uh, we can't turn them loose to do it until we resolve these grant issues and these other funding issues, is that correct? Yes. We can't get them started. Yes, and, and we'll have to do our own uh, um, uh, awards also and okay. stuff. Yeah. And we did, they did a preliminary study last year about the 2.5 times 100 year storm thing, and they published a few ideas, and, but that was all preliminary, right? So that's not really going to solve the problem we need to do the real feasibility study to get the right answers. Yeah, you know, let, let's take us back to why we did those tasks. Yeah. Uh, we, we were held up for a while, not given the approval to uh, move forward with the analysis for the project. And you brought up the letter of deficiency that had uh, timelines on it. We were about ready to ask because we could not meet those timelines for an extension but we really thought we would have to show some effort of uh, uh, some progress on the project through analysis uh, to ask for that. So, hey, we've done a certain amount of work, we'll still need to do more, can we have an extension? So that's why some of those preliminary tasks, uh, not reports, uh, yeah. the preliminary tasks were accomplished. And one of the ones right off the beginning is the one that you have to design this particular dam to, or, or the um, uh, or the capacity to, uh, was the two ha two and a half times the hundred year storm event. So they had to figure out what that figure was, and then there was uh, some concepts that gave us a flavor that if you did option one, option two, option three, what that would mean, and all that that really did was uh, well, it was good information. It was great information. But it, uh, uh, it fueled more questions to be asked, which will be answered uh, with, uh, um, through the feasibility study. Okay, and that's what we sort of published the data from for in April. It's on our, our website is the, the results of that preliminary study of the uh, two there, Was that a PowerPoint? There was PowerPoint data, yeah. But anyway, the, you can go look at this on our website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. River Study Presentation. Yeah, I don't think it's a real write-up or anything like that. I no, think it's no, a, it's a PowerPoint. A, yeah, okay. just some charts and, and yep. graphs, yeah. Okay, that's, those are my questions. I wanted to make sure I was on the right page with where we are. Okay, so now I'm going to switch gears and talk about another uh, grant. And this is with the uh, Coastal Resilience uh, Grant. And... Um, this is for uh, $40,000. Uh, 
uh, $20,000 match. Um, I'll back up and say that the stormwater planning grant on the SRF that I previously talked about had a zero uh, uh, match requirement. So that was a, a $100,000 uh, grant with no, uh, no match required. So with this coastal resilience, and um, uh, Mr. Huber talked about it at the last meeting uh, too, there's, there's some tests that are called out for that. And the, uh, the actual um, scope is not fully uh, solidified yet. There, there's a couple wordsmithing things we still have to do. But in concept, uh, we'll uh, do additional topo survey in the area, so many feet upstream, so many feet downstream, but also some of the abutting uh, land there too. So uh, that preliminary task that uh, Mr. Huber brought up uh, that we did uh, last year showed that some of those floodwaters or the uh, um, uh, the the, uh, the elevations of the waters uh, reach out beyond where we have uh, good cross-section data and stuff. So we'll have to go in and get more uh, um, uh, additional survey. Uh, this, and, and we tried to, not knowing that we would get uh, the uh, stormwater planning grant, uh, we f wanted to front load uh, the uh, this coastal resilience uh, grant uh, at the beginning of the feasibility study so we can get those out of the way and, and and not as it took maybe a year and a half to finish that those other items would be stragglers so we, so we put these things at the front so we can complete this grant sooner than than the whole feasibility study uh, the second item was a bathymetric survey, which is really trying to find uh, the stream bottom and, and, and mapping that uh, uh, topographically. Uh, the next thing was a sediment sampling plan uh, with some sediment analysis and some preliminary uh, uh, sediment management concepts for whatever they find uh, during the uh, sampling. And lastly, was also that, you know, okay, we're, we're designing this thing at uh, this improvement uh, for, for two and a half times the 100-year storm event. And it's gonna stay that way, uh, but as storm intensities and climate change uh, gets more intense, well, the overall flows are going to grow up too. So there's going to be a uh, little additional analysis so that we can try to anticipate what some of those future climate change figures might be. And, and that's part of this uh, grant also. Okay, any questions on that? Uh -huh. I guess I, I, one question I have is, do we anticipate a warrant article in March to address any of this, or do we You're think You're still going to the bottom line here again. <laughs> yeah, well, I just, I wonder if these things can be resolved before March. Is that okay, I mean? no, we are not going to go for a, uh, a town vote for, on a warrant uh, uh, for this project. Okay. Uh, yeah. What we will do is the, and I'm not the finance person here. I'm the uh, town engineer that says this pot of money will pay for this and this, you know, without really knowing how it all happens. But the town is the recipient of some um, uh, ARPA type funds uh, that uh, can be expended for uh, situations like, like this and stormwater improvements and cup water things that I don't even know uh, exactly what you can spend it for. But it's my understanding that the town will be paying uh, the balance of this feasibility study from that uh, pot of money that you know I refer to as the town ARPA funds. And again, that's the town engineer's perception of where the monies are coming from. And it might not be technically all correct, but that's my understanding. Okay. Okay, so there will not be a, a town warrant vote. 
I have a just I'm sorry, it's Carl Wickstrom in case they can't tell who's talking with a mask on the video. Uh, the, I have a question about the river crossing. This is separate from that. Uh, the river crossing of the sewer line from oh, this the J.D. Is the, Hill area. The, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the siphon brought. Siphon, siphon, siphon. The siphon. siphon. Yeah. Save that for... Uh, yeah. For the end here. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought we were okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we we're at the end. Sorry. No. No. We're we're, we're still we're still working through some of this. Okay. Stuff. We're still damning. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. These the survey work you were talking about. Does this include calculating the amount of wetlands that will be drained by this project? Not right at this point. No. When will that happen? Um, I, I'm trying to pick my words carefully because there will be an idea as you go through the different scenarios of uh, um, retrofits for the dam of what may be the uh, water surface elevation of the impoundment. Mm -hmm. And from there, with the data that you have, there could be some estimates of what the, um, the impoundment or the water surface elevations would be. And there would be then um, wetland development in there that that you could try to estimate, but I don't think you could ever uh, uh, fully come up to an exact type of figure for. Uh, so so that, that would have to wait to know the implications of when you start diving into the individual um, concepts of uh, how to um, retrofit the dam. So the, the task here that I was just talking about for the survey was in relationship to the Coastal Resilience Grant, which I told you is the front-loaded portion where we're going to uh, collect data. Uh, what you're asking for uh, would come later in the feasibility study with other um, tasks. I know I raised this question at the time of the Great Dam. Unfortunately, after that, I was too sick to really follow up on it. So yeah, this, this is an issue that you've brought up several times at these meetings here, of what is the implications. And then you've even mentioned, like, uh, uh, if, if some developer was trying to do something like this, how could they possibly do it? And... Um, Maybe we can, through the process, get uh, uh, the, um, the Wetlands Bureau to help weigh in on that, too, because with the dam removal, there were certainly uh, other benefits uh, that were derived, and, and the, uh, the wetlands might have changed locations, but they would have reestablished in different ones, too. So uh, it, it may be uh, uh, important uh, to get that statement from from the wetlands type folks because if there was a real detriment uh, to the environment there's no way that we would have been able to even get the wetlands permit yeah seems to me there will have to be a remediation plan of some sort because so there's a lot of wetlands going to be uh, drained so the mediation uh, of uh, the great dam happened uh, two ways. One was uh, from, and I don't really remember where we ran out, we, we bought, uh, I forget how many pounds of wetland type seed mix. Uh, we special ordered it, uh, and this was outside of the contractor. And once the dam was initially lowered, we had the public works people in canoes and blowers and all that kind of stuff seeding the uh, banks. And then eventually you ran out uh, of that and then didn't do anything uh, for the upper uh, reaches. 
and it all reestablished uh, uh, pretty quick. And I remember the conversations even with the NOAA folks uh, uh, back at that time. Uh, we wanted to show effort that we were trying to do a reestablishment type of thing, so that's why we went ahead with the seed mix. Uh, but even um, um, Noah at the time, and he was also a uh, participant with this group too, was like, some people do it, some people don't, and you know what, you're going to find that it reestablishes itself pretty dang quick. Uh, and we did it just in case uh, uh, trying to get a jump on any invasives that might want uh, to try to establish itself. Well, I'm talking not, not about making the mud flats green. I'm talking about remediation. I'm talking about, for example, when they put in Route 101, they had to, they had to build a large wetland to, to make up for the Oh, okay. I, I see where you're going and with that there, too. They built uh, Walmart. They had to buy 50 acres of land. Yeah, and, 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 and I don't know how to uh, figure this right now, and that's where maybe a little conversation with the, the folks at the Wetland Bureau, too, because, you know, obviously prior to the dam, things looked a little differently. And uh, if, if in case there is a dam removal, in ultimately with this one, if, uh, it, it's going to uh, uh, turn it back to what it was prior to the dam. Uh, so. Yeah, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> That's a weird can, argument since it's been that way for 350 years. I, I, can, I can speak to this a little bit um, as I'm, I'm a little bit aware of, of the process here. So what you're referring to is a wetland mitigation, yeah. in which case a development would come in and alter a, a wetland to a developed state, generally some kind of uh, impervious surface or, or the such. Generally, something like this would fall under um, a classification of a restoration. And while there would be uh, protocols going into that restoration, like uh, Paul's referring to, where you're actually reseeding and making sure, making sure the restoration takes, it's generally looked at as a very in a positive light through you know state environmental um, agencies. So that in most cases. Retur returning this to a more natural state wouldn't actually require separate mitigation because the project itself is actually the mitigation itself. Mm -hmm. hmm. If we end up removing the dam, can we schedule another severe drought to help? <laughs> I, I, we'll cross that one later. Here. <laughs> uh, Okay, so uh, money. Mr. Huber, money. Yeah. Um, we had prepared a CIP write-up and the dollar figure that, the, that we were requesting is $185,000. That is the amount that I believe the uh, town will need to appropriate with that town ARPA funds, $185,000. And that should take us uh, pretty much to the end of the feasibility study. And, you know, th this town has gone through feasibility studies before. And as you go through stuff, you learn things. And there might be some... Uh, some things that you didn't think about there, um, but that would have to be addressed. But assuming that we've got a handle and using the Great Dam as the uh, uh, as the teacher here, I, I think that's the figure that that uh, we need to appropriate. Okay. Now, the role of this committee would be at the end of the feasibility study to inform the public as much as we possibly can of what all the options are and what the pros and cons of each option is and what the cost of each option would be and get the public involved and informed. And I believe that public would involve Brentwood as well. Uh, is that fair to say? Well, you, you're the chair, you know, so, so well, you can I'm, govern I'm what you want to role. do. Yeah. But, the, That's largely let's go the role back. That we played in the Great Dam, so I'm hoping that we do a, a similar good job on this one. Let, let's go back to the uh, Great Dam project then. And, and you came a little later in the process. Um, and I came late in the whole <laughs> Great Dam project uh, too. There was some feasibility, there was some studies done trying to answer lots of different things. 
And in about 2008, when I came to work for the town, um, it's like, okay, what are we gonna do now? How are we gonna solve this? We got information. We started moving forward with trying to figure it all out. Uh, and we were going with structural fixes to the dam or modifications and uh, the, not even looking at the uh, possibility of dam removal and then you know the reason why yes i i, I do but okay i just want to make sure that's clear yep and um, then um, some of the uh, des folks with some funding came and said hey look at dam removal one more time before you make your choice and so that's how the dam removal uh, feasibility study uh, happened. And it was a good thing because some of, the, some of the fixes that the previous report says that we could do for the dam end up not being viable after all, starting with the design flows that we needed to work with because of uh, climate change. So it was almost like, yeah, it's good information back there, but now we have to modify it with, more, with, with better data. And so it was almost like uh, uh, not starting from scratch, but, but, but doing things all in, in one type of booklet there. So you had, good, you had a good comparison between structural modifications and dam removals, and so you could, have a more of a uh, apple to apple comparison and none of it's apple to apple but better better of it so so that's uh um so when the feasibility uh um of dam removal wanted to be looked at this this committee uh, uh, I think put a smaller committee uh, together uh, that was for the actual study itself that uh, met a little bit more frequently than the overall board uh, did. And that committee uh, figured out a scope of what we wanted to ask a consultant to figure out. It asked the public, hey, this is what we're asking, what do you want to ask them here? And, and it was a very big, big process. From there, we put RFPs together. We interviewed uh, two, two companies that I remember. I forget how many actual proposals we got. It went back and forth quite a few times. Uh, and then um, finally awarded it to uh, our consultant. And from there, there was a periodic updates uh, from the consultant uh, to the board of findings. Uh, then there was uh, uh, interim uh, uh, public presentations of what we know so far and where we're, we're headed, what we still have to do. And then lastly, it was the, uh, well, no, lastly for the consultant was the um, draft final report or draft yeah draft final report uh did a presentation on that got comments and then did a final report from there it was then the committee that was the educators of the uh public then also of uh you know what the options meant uh so when you say what is the role of this committee yeah uh, you, what was done with the Great Dam took many years to accomplish. Yeah, we don't have that many years. And, 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 and frankly, we, we, we had some pretty good lessons that we learned through that, you know? So, so that's why it makes uh, uh, this uh, a little bit easier. Um, I, would, I would say that uh, one of the important messages is that this committee never took a position on what the outcome should be. The position of the committee was to inform the public of what all the options meant. And I think that's important because we didn't want to come down on a particular side. Not an easy decision, though. Yeah. This committee was not, I mean, this committee was spring loaded to take the dam out. Well, but had we taken a position, we would have had a problem in the sense that the public might have perceived us as not being fair and above board. Well, I, I can tell you that the consultants in their 
final report was not biased in any one fair. of the options. Dam removal, dam modification, X, Y, Z, whatever. It was, this is what you get if this one happens, and this is about how much it's going to cost. Yeah, and I, I believe that our role should be to inform the public and not take a position. That's what I think we ought to do. There was, there was an issue, a major issue that came up, and this is, we don't need to detail, it was about history, which was, was not something that we could handle by the committee itself. There was a very strong movement afoot, not take the dam out because it was a historical device. And, uh, <laughs> and to when, when it came down to vote, that in large measure was where the negative side came up. But regardless of that, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. This, this committee was role has, has to be, uh, to be fair, and to bring be the linkage between you and the engineers and the consultants and the public. Uh, we, on the other hand, we should not play a role when the time comes to try to get the vote of one way or the other uh, when it becomes a Warren article. We should play no political role at all. I have to interrupt again just to mention Seacoast Sunday, December 12th. Front page, natural solution, removal of Exeter's dam, Exeter's Great Dam offers lessons for other communities. We are famous. <laughs> anyway, just had to say that. Famous or infamous? In, well, whatever. <laughs> so th there was a, a large cultural resource effort. Yeah. And, and lots of hurdles with the Great Dam project. This uh, project also is anticipated to have some of the same hurdles, and uh, that would be uh, built into the uh, um, feasibility study cost. Too. Well, one of the things, we, create, we created a historical group, which is reporting to us. I'm not sure we're going to have to do that when it comes time to deal with the, uh, the other dam. There well, that was dam removal. And that's why you had that that historical committee that, yep. that you're talking about gonna, here. They'll, they'll here, a role of some you still sort got the it. options of everything here, and it's right. premature to have something like that. You know, the, and, and, and just to elaborate on on the Great Dam. Well, okay, it's being removed. It, that means lots of different things to lots of different people, and that's why that 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 subset. Uh, committee uh, was formed to find out which uh, what things is the town going to do to try to uh, mitigate the cultural loss of the of the dam. Right. Yeah. Paul, a quick quick question on this. You might come to this later on. We've been, we've also discussed the possibility that we we could do things to remove the potential problems without having removed the dam. In other words, move houses. Is that still under consideration? Well, well that's going to be like option number one in the feasibility study. What yep. does it mean to try to go backwards to um, make sure that this is not a problem here? Uh, right. Whether it's to purchase lands, this, that, but whatever. But there will be a, uh, uh, at least a section of saying what you can and can't do as it relates to that. Right. I got a, Trevor has a comment. Uh, just a quick clarifying question going back to um, the Great Dam removal as well as uh, any process moving from here about pickpocket is <clears throat> who is the ultimate decision maker? Is it a warrant article that it goes to? Or is that a, or yeah, I, I guess who would make that final decision on, on all well, It was interesting because the select board was not in favor of proceeding quickly. And there were citizens who went out and put a warrant article on the boat to remove the dam, and it passed by 60% yeah. over the objections of all, all sorts of people. So it's really sort of interesting how that developed. Yeah. There's a story there we don't know, but the thing that this, this exercise is more controllable than that. Yeah. Because this exercise, in large measure, is under the auspices of the select board. And they're generally with it now, whereas before, yeah. the select board wasn't sure what they wanted to do with it. Yeah. And this, this is running in a different fashion. And it'll eventually come, there's no question in my mind at least, it'll eventually come be a Warren article 
and once again the public will have to vote on it how the Warren article is, is stated will most I would hope is going to have a dollar figure on it which will require us to do it but it might very well be that it'll be a Warren article take it in or leave it out without a figure, dollar figure in it there's no dollar figure in it there's no requirement upon the select board to, to act on it necessarily Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it with the dollar figure in it, which if whatever we end up doing gets done. Yeah. And, and we just don't leave it to the select board to, to worry about it. So there's some differences in procedures in, in terms of this. But I, I think it's going to be a Warren article with the figure in it coming from, the, coming out. It's already in the CIP in some fashion, building in there. And another difference is that Brentwood has some interest in this problem. Where well, the there public's going to want to see there wasn't dollar. any other yeah. town that needed to be involved in the great dam removal. Right. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, moving on to the uh, next subject. And, um, oh, I don't know, nine months ago, a year ago, um, the public works director, Jennifer Perry, uh, was talking to the board about the uh, a draft um, um, total nitrogen general permit as it relates to the wastewater treatment facility. Um, it was quite stringent with a, a lot of uh, different things that tied storm water into it. Um, then I think we gave you an update that the um, um, EPA, DES, and I don't know exactly which group it was, I got rid of that and, and went to the uh, Great Bay Total Nitrogen General Permit in a different form that had a, an adaptive management uh, uh, portion uh, for the stormwater. And the town decided that uh, we would like to do something like that, that was a way to remove nutrients uh, uh, from our uh, stormwater systems. Uh, and so we're on, we've got it in the, we had it in the CIP for some of these improvements. This is another one of those projects that is going to be taken out of any town warrant vote and funded uh, through that uh, town uh, ARPA funds. Uh, what was in the uh, uh, CIP was about $99,000 uh, for, for s several different tasks. I'm in the process now, or the department's in the process now, of, uh, of working through another potential grant that can pay for a portion of this. And, and it's not going to be all of the tasks that were in there. There's three tasks in particular that uh, we would be looking at. One is the advanced septic system. Is there any way for the town to incentivize uh, um, uh, septic system, uh, advanced septic system installations there because uh, you'll have a much better uh, nutrient removal, nitrogen removal with those types of systems. Uh, another item uh, that this grant could, uh, will cover too, is um, uh, they call them BMPs, but they're, they're, they're installations that, that take some of the uh, 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 nutrients out of the storm water so that the outfalls run cleaner. Uh, they'll be looking at where we can do more of these in town and then go ahead and give a like a 75% type of design for one or two of those uh, projects when you find out which one have the most benefit. Now we've already gone through something like that in our biggest watershed and we it's called in the reports and it's on the websites there too, the Lincoln Street sub watershed area. Uh, and it came up with uh, places that you can put these BMPs in 
and what the, the nitrogen removals are. The, the intent of this one is to look at other areas of the town, not just our largest watershed, and see if any of these things can be installed elsewhere. And then uh, lastly, the, um, uh, the grant will touch upon um, uh, the fertilizer program with uh, education, and we know that fertilizers are high in nitrogen, and if you can uh, uh, use fertilizers wisely, uh, uh, there's less chance of it than having run off into our water systems. So that uh, grant is, is being prepared. We already have uh, preliminary approval to, to move to the uh, um, uh, final application for that. And that's somewhere in the vicinity of forty, forty-five thousand dollars. Also, so you know, it, it, it'll be a good improvement uh, um, for us. Okay, and then I want to mention uh, the um, at the end of this month, our annual total nitrogen report is due, and the this is a requirement back when we had to put together a uh, um, nitrogen control plan in conjunction with the installation of the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, we had to do an annual report of how we're making out, and that's how land use changes are happening, uh, and, and also what is happening down at the wastewater treatment facility. So that is due at the uh, end of the month, and that's what we are uh, putting together now so that's the last thing that i have any questions on that before we bring up the <laughs> siphon project can we go back to search uh, uh, septic tanks does the town have any idea of the quality of the existing septic tanks you talked about advanced septic tanks do we have any idea of what we have right now in terms of those that are good or not so good uh, not good or not so good. I would say that we could get a handle on how many septic systems are out there just because we know through sewer bills who's connected to the uh, town sewage. Um, from there, there's probably not too many advanced systems. But as far as is the septic system on the lot, uh, functioning good or not so good, no, we, we don't have a, a figure on that. The reason why I ask, my next door neighbor, he's now moved on, came to me and asked me, why do I have a truck in my backyard? And I said, well, we're pumping the sewer, pumping the septic system. He said, what's that? <laughs> and I assume he's got one? I've got a septic system. He He's had one, one too. too. Yeah. Our whole street has one. Yeah. But, but what I'm raising is that here was a person, now he was a Brit and his wife was a Canadian, <laughs> but the fact of the matter was that there are most probably many people out there have never thought about it and have perhaps not even pumped it. So I'm a little concerned that if we're really concerned about this, that we ought to be thinking about uh, in some fashion, not, uh, not telling people you've got to do this, but thinking about what's out there which might have already failed has potential to fail, and if we can do this at the same time we're thinking about advanced septic systems, I mean, it might be useful. Yeah, it, 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 and I don't have 100% of the specifics here, but uh, at least for the last four oh, few years, uh, there is a septic week, a septic system week, I think it's in September-ish, and uh, there's displays and there's Facebooks and there's that type of stuff. And I think in, in conjunction with the Conservation Commission, I think it, it might have been, uh, uh, there was going to be a mailing whether that happened or not, I don't know, but that was funding the, at least the, the cost of mailing them. Um, uh, notices to all the residents that would have septic systems that, hey, there is this, uh, uh, um, it might not be annual maintenance, but there's this maintenance that you do and pumping uh, septic tanks is one of those things in there. So, so there was an education effort or is one now uh, with that. That would help. Yep. But I'm, I'm, I'm yep. concerned that there are people out there who could care less. And, and that's not what this grant no, is talking that. about. Yeah. It's talking about a, another 
Uh, and I think Melissa Paley mentioned it when, when she was in front of you folks talking. There, there's this other little side chamber that does its thing uh, that helps with, when it gets into the septic field and leaches in that it's got a lot of that nitrogen uh, roaming around. I like those technical terms. <laughs> okay, now any any questions, and we'll go on to the septic uh, to the siphon. Siphon. Yeah, siphon. yeah I'm just uh, curious what the status was. I understand there was a grant that was perhaps coming. Uh, there was a preliminary work already being done, or maybe even design work being done. What's the status? What do we anticipate? So the to design finish? work is almost complete. You've got to really wait for all the permits to get back before you can finalize the design in case they have any comments and stuff. Right. So going through the permit process, um, the, um, the one that uh, we're waiting for the most now is the Army Corps of Engineers. And there were some requests about uh, additional borings in the river. And uh, we thought that we had enough with the original installation of the siphons, the data from that, uh, plus uh, a couple that were uh, done on the mill side of the river and also at the pump station side of the river uh, the, that we thought we had enough data. So we're, we're going to reply back uh, probably next week, get that to them, as this is additional information uh, for you to consider. Um, yeah, but I think it's the Army Corps permit that we're waiting for. So is, is it designed? It's up in the 90-some percent design type of thing. Um, and um, easements over on the mill side, we've got some sketches that they agree to. Now it's just a matter of putting words to paper. And uh, funding. Funding, uh, there was the... Um, uh, Mr. Pappas that uh, was trying to get uh, $600,000 of congressional spending and I'm still in limbo with all of the Washington stuff right at the moment. Um, I think you'll know more about mid-month uh, uh, next month. Uh, from there, you probably will not see a warrant article. This is my understanding right at the moment. On that, because I think this is another one of those places where that uh, town ARPA funds uh, can be used and would be used for this. As, as I recall, we needed about an, another million dollars or so, maybe 1.1 million, to actually finish this project. And that there were several grants that might fill that gap so we don't have to use town funds. Is that additional town funds? Is that, is that correct? Am I right in that? Uh, is that what you're saying the, with these the, two grants the possible? The increased since that oh, figure. Okay. Uh, reevaluation as you were given options for because uh, we were originally going through the SRF funding mechanisms for that mm -hmm. uh, so some costs did increase but you, you know did another quarter million dollars whatever it is uh, on, on top of all that uh, uh, but you, you're generally correct other than the the anticipated costs are, are okay. increased are they increases such that there will be a gap, or, and, or do you think that there's going to be enough from the grants that they all come through? There, there won't be enough from the grant. No, it, it'll have to be. So there won't, but there won't be a be warrant. supplemented or, through the the ARPA funds, and I don't know exactly where. And okay, but not town money. It would be well. No, not directly town money. Not taxpayer town money. Is that? Am I trying to get it? Trying to get the right phrase. I don't know what it is. That, Local that, money. The, the, I, I don't know truthfully the, the final answer to that. Okay. Uh, but somebody but, in town does above me. Okay. If it's <laughs> if it's local money, won't won't a town warrant be required? A warrant article be required? Do we have to have additional funds? Uh, I don't know. For, okay. No. Yeah. And then town warrants do have a, like a minimum dollar figure to it all the time too. Yeah, I, I, I think we're being covered through the ARPA, town okay. ARPA funds. And, and I keep saying town as opposed to uh, like DES ARPA funds that through the SRF process was able to get more because you had a pipeline. So, so try to keep 
myself not confused. That's why I say town Arthur. Excuse me. We're about to lose Terry, and I wanted to ask uh, what we should do for our next meeting before she leaves. Do um, you. you think we have a reason to meet in February, or shall we put Let it on? Let me ask you a question first. You said, what is this role of the committee? And I gave you the history of um, the Great Dam Project and the role of the committee in a condensed form. Um, if you're liking how we proceeded with the Great Dam Project, I can run with this project to move things along uh, with the um, uh, DES grant and I can move it along with the coastal grant. Uh, so, uh, but if you wanted to weigh in specifically on uh, uh, the um, preliminary scope or something like that, well then I'd rather not lose a month. Okay, so we should meet in February. Is that yes. what we're yeah, yeah. Sure. Everybody thinks? I think we're to the point. Where well, we're, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get in, where we're to the point now is the relationship between this committee and you. That's where I'm going. Through you is important enough to keep it going. Well, I, I don't want to step on this committee's toes on how much they wanted to dive into the scope of the project. Uh, uh, so. That's why if you really wanted to dive into it, then we should meet next month to have something uh, so that I can have uh, more timely replies to the grant folks. Um, uh, if, if not, you know, and we use the Great Dam as the, uh, as the teacher, well then, I can move without having this board here, and and, and uh, we can, we can get a lot of things done that way too. So, okay, so we could meet in March instead of March. February. The only problem with that is it's on St. Patty's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. We're green. <laughs> uh, but do we do we think that's beer. how many it's people good. are in favor of March? March is good. Sure. March is good. Yeah. Okay, I'm we'll not turn to Paul like loose to make day. all the progress he can possibly make before March <laughs> without having to be bothering us. for a good reason for I'm going to be Thank in you. New York. Okay, okay so we're going to meet in March. March 17th so. happens to be St. Patty's Day. Well done with me? I, do we have? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I can go ahead and tell you now, unless my plans change, I won't be here for the next meeting if it's on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patrick's Day is going to be gone. Y'all yeah. can have all the green beer you want. I'm going to be in New York if, if, if it doesn't get changed again for COVID. I was going to be in New York next week, but, that got, but it got postponed because nice. of COVID. It may get postponed again. So. Okay, well, maybe we can get Nico and... Uh, Warren to come to, you know, we'll need it yeah, we because need a we need a quorum. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to mention that there is an ALY festival planned for May 14th, thereabouts, and they would like us to be involved uh, to maybe even host a table or something to describe what we do as our committee. ALY Festival. So the ALY will be coming up the river and everybody will be celebrating and there's all kinds of plans for things to do. So can I count on you all to come and take well, what part? What are they to do? Well, I think, I, I'm guessing that there will be a table for us that represents the river table. table. Information table. Did you get a notice? Did, did the ALY get notified that they are supposed to come on that day? Yes. Well, oh, okay. and if they <laughs> miss by a day or two, there will be other celebrations. But okay. that's, you know, the ALY are scheduled. Get you up as one. <laughs> so in any case, uh, they would want our involvement, and I'm hoping that we'll show up and be part of it. Uh, it we, I believe the date is May 14th. It's a Saturday. But that could shift if they're still in the planning phases. If the fish were deciding to come another week, they might move it. Well, let's clarify with them that we, we will provide information because what I don't want to be part of is selling uh, hamburgers or something like that. Oh, what about wearing a model of an ALI fish? We can do that, but we're all pretty big. 
Yeah. Right? But, I, but I think if we clarify that we would be willing to be there because we can provide information yes. regarding yes. the Great Dam and regarding where we're going in the future, yeah. that's fits in with, with, within our charter. Okay, we're going to meet in March. By then, I may have a clearer idea of exactly what's involved and how many hours that's going to have. They're going to be open, but it's it's a celebration in all sorts of ways. So there will be lots of noise and activity and things that we may not want to be involved in, but, but we should there be there to represent the River Committee and the alewife, the restoration of the alewife fish. So that's one thing. Um, there's also a report now from Prep. The uh, Piscataway Regional uh, Estuaries Partnership Prep, and there's a new report that's come out. I don't know how many of you are interested in following this, but uh, they're being active. So just <laughs> for total transparency, I actually work for Prep. My okay. professional hat is working for Prep. So if there's any info, uh, questions about that, um, okay, you can contact like Trevor if, you, yep. if you're interested. I, I got this in the mail and I looked it over. I hadn't been going to their Zoom meeting, but uh, you know it is an organization that's very similar to ours in the sense of concern about the river and things. Okay, and uh, you know just so you remember the. Uh, the new date for all fixes complete for the Pickpocket Dam is December 1st of 2025. I'm sorry, that's, uh, no, that's the old one. The new date, we advise the Dam Bureau on how the Pickpocket Dam deficiency will be fixed. That's June 1st of 24. And now all fixes complete is December 1st of 27. So we have a few more years, but as he was saying, it takes a year and a half to do this feasibility study, and then you've got a lot of work to, to make it happen. All right. Any other uh, public comment, other business? Yeah. Everybody's happy? Move we close. Move we close. So Lionel has moved that we close. Trevor is seconding. Second. Seconding, okay. So we'll vote to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.